Hi, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin' with Scarkin' It's D Boss Reacts, this video by Moon. It's titled Jake Paul vs. Mike Tyson is Everything Wrong with Society. Damn. Um, I'm gonna watch the highlights of this. I'm gonna put it on Patreon. Um, because I need to know how this how this goes down. If Mike doesn't win, I'm just through with everybody. But but sure, let, let's hear what uh, they have to say about this situation. Let's watch. Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson is everything wrong with society. This is a fight that once again pushes the message that clout, money, and influence is valued above everything else in our yeah, society. Sure. And while it's going to be fun to watch the fights, the fact that it's even taking place can tell us a lot about where society is headed. If you were to have told somebody 50 years ago about this situation, it would just seem laughable, absurd, and downright stupid. Even but now 10 it's becoming years ago, increasingly like... acceptable that any influencer with enough followers can become the face of boxing, taking down older men from their former glory and using their reputation to force your brand into the public consciousness. Boxing is meant to be a test of strength and durability, a display of discipline and dedication. Jake Paul and just influencer culture in general has turned this into a spectacle. And on the surface, it makes sense. It's great marketing, it brings in a bunch of cash, and may actually promote boxing as a whole. And of course, Jake Paul and lots of these other it is playing sport, a role. Though. Just like when he started oh, building wow. his brand online, Paul's had no issue making Andrew. himself the supposed villain. He almost seems to revel in this, playing up the arrogant persona he spent years building and angering fans whenever he could. Now, most amateurs in boxing have to claw their way to the top. They spend years honing their skills before they're even for given a shot at recognition, much less the big league. Paul, in contrast with clout and influence, has essentially paid his way to fight in the big leagues. And if you have enough money and clout, it seems like in our society today, you can almost do anything now. No matter where it's fair, just, or not. Using his money and influence, he was able to get athletes with legends behind their names to fight him. And to his audience, he was taking on the best of the best, I which mean, added weight to his declaration to being a great fighter when he won. And it annoyed boxing fans to no end, especially since most could see that almost all of his fights favoured him. All of his opponents seemed to be older, retired fighters in financially difficult spots. Mm. That's all they weren't even boxers. Take his fight with Ben Askren, for example. In yeah. his prime, Askren was an incredible fighter, so good in fact that he represented the US at the 2008 Olympics. Jay Paul's decision to take on a former Olympic athlete was impressive, almost brave. However, this loses all meaning when you start to realize that Askren is a wrestler and not a boxer. The influencer wasn't fighting one of the best US wrestlers, he was fighting the worst striker in the UFC history. While the fights definitely weren't staged, it was apparent that Paul had taken the easy way to the top. And it's not necessarily his fault if he's able to do it and make a bunch of money from doing it, it kind of makes sense. But at the same time, the fact that this stuff is allowed and just continues to go on, taking precedence over real boxing, is showing what's really valued. It isn't just the dedication oh, skill, God. rising to the top from nothing. What the sport really seems to be valuing today is clout, money, and superficial flashiness. This is why boxing elites and many others question the legitimacy of his career. Many suspected the influencer wouldn't stand a chance against a professional boxer. And the same could be said for KSI and oh, all these God, other influencers. So spurred on by the fact that no one trusted in his ability, and the fact that Jake is a relatively good boxer, he challenged Tommy Fury. Fury is the only pro boxer Paul is actually dared to fight, and it's obvious why. Having grown used to the slower pace of former opponents, Paul wasn't ready for Fury's rapid fire hits, and unsurprisingly, Fury won. And those who doubted the influencer's skills felt justified. Now, most people could ignore Jake again for the average person he slipped back into oblivion. As a result, his next few fights were bittersweet wins, but they just weren't landing the same, and the now 27 year old wasn't really having it. He needed a fight that would grab people's attention, something that would anger them so much that they couldn't help but pay attention to him. A boxing fight that should never happen. A fight that's completely about just clout, money, and nothing else. He needed to challenge one of the most iconic fighters in the world. A fighter who was once so dangerous, Jake's life would have been in danger had he fought him in his prime. Mike Tyson. There's one thing that you can't deny about Jake Poole. He's confident. Few people can challenge Iron Mike to a fight and come out the other side unscathed, even at his age. Many who faced the boxer in the ring got their backsides handed to them. One even lost part of his he head. So when Jake issued his challenge, I fans' like responses that range from outrage to excitement. <laughs> but the real elephant in the room here is that Tyson is obviously three decades older than the influencer. He made a name for himself in the boxing world before Paul was even born. The, only... the problem with this is Mike is crazy. Okay, he's crazy. So even if it was something decided that oh he supposed to let uh, Jake win, I, I still wouldn't trust getting in the ring with this man because he you might do something that annoys him and he snaps. And, you know, you get bit or whatever or something crazy take, takes place. So, I don't think this is smart. But <laughs> we will see what takes place. At the time of me recording this, it's it's Friday. It's 5 p.m., actually. And the, I think the fight starts at 5. <laughs> I think about it. I kind of want to watch it live, honestly. Hmm. Should I do this live on Patreon? Recently How long does the boxing match? 
During his time in the ring, Tyson fought in 58 matches and won 50 of them. And good. most of these were knockouts. His and most iconic being against Michael well, Spinks so in 1988. Know. In just over 91 okay, seconds, he knocked Spinks out. The fight Highlights. is now famed as the sixth shortest heavyweight title fight in history. And even though he's nearing 60, which seems to level out the playing field, he should really never be fighting Jake Paul in the first place. Now, for a man pushing 60, Tyson is in incredible shape. Leading up to his fight with Paul, he hit his sparring partner so hard that he had to be sent to hospital. Not only that, but Gene Kilroy, a longtime friend of Muhammad Ali, was shocked at how far he'd come despite his age. This is the strongest I've ever seen you. Yeah? Yeah, the strongest I've ever had. I know you since you're 13. I think this is so, this impressed out of me. Uh, as fit as he may be, that doesn't erase the fact that Tyson is old and is currently dealing with the consequences of his tumultuous past. He was even forced to postpone his initial fight with Jay due to health complications. Mm -hmm. And he's dealing with more than just ulcer flare-ups that need immediate medical attention. As in 2022, Tyson had to use a walking stick in a wheelchair due to nerve issues that affected his legs. Health issues aside, he also hasn't fought professionally in over 20 years. Which is why many people are worried yeah, that this bout with Jake might actually be too much for him. Promoters like Eddie Hearn have been particularly outspoken about the ordeal. His biggest concerns are the danger Tyson will be putting himself in and the lack of respect for the integrity of the sport. Because I think it's just disrespectful to the sport, but I don't want to see it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to watch my all-time favourite fighters, one of my heroes, I guess, in a boxing ring at 55 years of age, a shell of what he once was. Yeah. He made it clear that if Tyson got seriously hurt in the ring, it was on the people who allowed this match to even happen. Right. And Jake has actually also shown concern for the older fighter's health as well. After Tyson's ulcer flare-up in May, he assured people his primary concern was the boxer's health. However, he's also not giving Tyson much choice in the matter. Now, of course, Paul seems to be running on pure ego in the build-up to this fight. If you listen to any of his interviews, it's evident that he's on an unearned power trip. Sure, he's spoken about how oh honored he is that Tyson agreed to fight him. It is an honor to step in there Shut with up. one of the three biggest legends in the history of the sport. But he's also regularly declared that he's fighting Tyson and no one else. It puts the boxer in an awkward position. Either he doesn't fight the influencer, ending his boxing career once and for all, which most would welcome. Or he risks a dangerous fight that could leave him hurt oh, no, and ruin the reputation it's, of it's boxing. Let me see it. Jake is also constantly talking himself up. Something that's unsurprising for clout-hungry influencers, but he seems particularly How is it streaming on Netflix? I've never like seen anything stream on there before. The Four revealed itself in an interview at the end of last month. While talking with the Today Show Australia, Paul insisted he is a killer, I think and that he was born to be world champion, not an easy task for a non-professional boxer. But nonetheless, he's determined to be so. People just think I'm this nice, crazy, smiley social media content Nobody creator. thinks that. I like to have fun. You know, I've always been the class clown, but I'm a killer. Uh, this is what I was bred to do. This is my destiny. However, he sounds less like a man sure of his abilities and more like someone trying to get people to take him seriously. And perhaps he cares more about what people think than he's letting on. And unfortunately for him, everyone but his YouTube audience seems to be on Tyson's side. Even fighters like Quinton Jackson and Conor McGregor want Tyson to shut that kid up and rattle him. But this fight between Jake Paul and Mike Tyson is more than just an embarrassment for the boxing world. It will become a demonstration of how society rewards and often values showmanship over hard work. Mm. These kinds of novelty Talk bouts are nearly it. always disappointing and they're always forgotten shortly afterwards. Everyone remembers George Foreman's fight against Ali. All the time he took back the belt is stunning two decades later. Because think about if this happened in basketball, you know, like, or football, like, this... This is not it. And I'm not talking about a separate game because obviously they have like the celebrity games. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying if they had a legend like Michael Jordan trying to do a 1v1 against, I don't know, flight or something. <laughs> Maybe not flight, but somebody. You know, it would just be like, okay, this is goofy. Like, But I feel like this is even worse because, yeah, boxing is a one-on-one -on -one sport. If it's a 1v1, then it could be, you know, written off as like, oh, that's a casual thing. It's not serious. This is an actual event, a boxing event that's being streamed live. Like, it's it's cosplaying as actual real boxing when it's like, is it really? <laughs> and, I mean, Jake has his experience in boxing, sure, but he's just not on Mike Tyson's level. So, it's just weird. It's, it is very odd and it just shows that yeah this is 2024 and it's it's strange uh, but barely anyone remembers the timing for five men in one night it just doesn't really have the same place in history as it comes across just so absurd my mom used to have a george former girl <laughs> i used to make burgers on that hours. but these influencer fights are a bit different to the classic exhibition matches we used to see at first they just fought between each other 
It was completely opaque with what they were doing with the first Logan v. Kier sci fight. Both of the influencers got to advertise themselves in front of a whole new audience. It was also a great way of perpetuating and monetizing their manufactured feuds. Oh, Years after the fight, no, Logan and Kier are now business say. selling moldy lunchable knockoffs, making it seem like they were always friends and business partners. Before, these fights were clearly just about the money and you could easily ignore them to focus on real boxing matches. But now these fights are starting to poison the rest of boxing, and if they continue to bring in massive crowds, they could easily become the norm. This is one of the first of these big fights that actually isn't an exhibition match. It's going on both of their records. That's so crazy. if Jake Paul does end up victorious, it would be a fitting analogy for the state of boxing right now. New money triumphing over an old, tired ex-champion. It's made even more tragic by the fact that Tyson is one of those rare modern celebrities whose fame is directly a result of his own grit and talent. And you can't really blame him for cashing in on his past achievements, as Tyson will earn a reported $20 million from the fight. But staggeringly, that's only half of what Jake Paul will make. It still wow. doesn't seem right. It's often a sad story when Xboxes wow. go back into the ring against far younger men if they lose badly. Another reason influencers have latched onto boxing is that it gives them a feeling of legitimacy. J. Paul wants to make it as a boxer, or at least he says that he does, because it would be a real achievement. He never will, of course, and his ego tripping takes up space and attention which is directly needed by the rest of the boxing world. There are obviously far more skilled boxers in the world, people who have dedicated years to climbing up the ranks, and many will never even get a taste of the viewership drawn to the Jake Paul Mike Tyson fight. And it's kind of infuriating that an influencer who's been in the game for a few years can earn more from showing up to a fight than a pro can ever win from winning one, especially for longtime boxing fans. Even more infuriating is how little new audiences actually care about the sport. While influencers are introducing an entire generation to boxing, there's little to no interest in pro matches anymore as the only thing that's actually promoted by the boxing networks is drama between influencers and how quickly they can take each other out. And this is all because influencer fights are just a lot more flashier. They're essentially WWE without the professionals or safety measures. It's no wonder that Logan Paul's new move is to literally work for the WWE. And the fact that this is just boxing now is warping the young generation's sense of value and success. It seems like these days your success is often measured just by how many followers you have. It doesn't even matter if you're skilled at your craft. If you aren't earning vast amounts of money from it, you just aren't successful. Or rather, that's the mindset of a lot of the younger generation, as learned from following people like Jake Paul and other influencers. Now, he may inspire someone to follow in his footsteps, but what happens when they don't succeed as fast as he did? They may get frustrated to the point they resent the sports and eventually drop it. While the situation is hypothetical, it is still very likely. But even more worrying is the fact that to make it as a boxer, or anything really in life anymore, it's more about your clout and appearance rather than the substance behind it. Valuing flashiness over professionalism is extending far beyond just boxing. And even more worryingly is that we're starting to see this in the political sphere, as people have completely forgotten today that they shouldn't really rely on their favorite celebrities for political guidance, nor celebrities to run for president, as their expertise is flashiness and entertainment, not what's best for an entire Dark. country's governance. But as younger generations are pushed more and more towards distrusting their government that has abandoned them, they rely on stars to make their critical decisions. So many people trust celebrity agendas celebrity or even politicians. Sense. They'll trust Hollywood stars virtue signaling or billionaires trying to be relatable more than actual professionals in the field. Just like the boxing fights that we're starting to see, hatred and division is the best thing to make money. It's the best thing that gets views, and it's the best things to profit from these views. Just like in politics, the stronger and more dividing your opinions, the more fame and attention you seem to get, and thus the more power. Which is leading to a world where we value superficial facades and increasing division and disunity over everything else. An entire society continually arguing over who's going to win in a fight and who looks the best. Now in regards to this fight, the fight will be huge. It'll probably go down as one of the biggest events in sports history, but not because of the skill involved. It's all just because of outrage clicks. People wanting to see Jay get punched in the face by Mike and laughing at his weakened abilities. All for a giant profit from the flashiness, no substance fight that's changing boxing for the absolute worst. No matter what happens in this fight, Jake Paul won't emerge as a hero, and he knows that. It's just part of the persona. If he actually does beat Mike Tyson, he might become the face of boxing for Elizabeth. Oh, but he's also no, the guy please. who beats up an old man for that title to get more exactly. views and he is a On the other hand, the if way. Tyson wins, Jake Paul will be the laughing stock of the sport. But as much as people will continue to shame him, he doesn't care what people think. And it's easy to see why. At the end of the day, he will make a bunch of money from this and become more famous for it. And you can't really blame him for that. It's more the fact that he's rewarded for doing so in the first place. And this is just one of the most frustrating things about this entire situation. 
While you might not want to support the fights, there is one big silver lining to it all that we haven't discussed, the undercard. Lots of these fights are entirely deserving of their own spot in the limelight, like Taylor for Serrano too. Their first fight was a sight to behold, it was a war, going to the full 10 rounds and ending in a controversial split decision. Now the long-awaited rematch, which was put on hold when the Tyson Paul fight got delayed in July, is finally happening. It's the decider between two world champions at the top of their class. This is the fight to watch on the night, see. not the novelty match afterwards. Then there's the showdown in the men's WBC welterweight belt between Barrio and Ramos. And while Barrios is the clear favorite in the rankings and record, there's still a lot of potential for an upset. They're both dangerous fights, and while lots of their previous fights with other opponents have gone the distance, a fiery finish isn't completely off the table. Obviously, there's been far less publicity for these fights, and it's a shame they're on the undercard at all. But the hunger and drive that these real athletes have far outweighs all of that. At the end of the day, this is what should be getting people's attention. So if you already have a Netflix subscription, these are the fights worth tuning into. And if you've got the time and the curiosity, maybe watch the fight that happens after as well. Listen, I like the idea of being able to stream some on Netflix. Put this subscription price to work. Cause it's gone up i've heard i don't know what the cost is <laughs> to be honest it's just charged to my car every month but I, i'm sure i got an email or something saying it, it went up and i've heard people complain about it so yes give us our money's worth okay um so i i think i'm about to go stream and watch a little bit of it obviously i i won't see the tyson and jake paul fight in time uh, because it'll probably take a while for them to come out, right? I don't think I got enough time before I gotta go. Anyway, hot mess. I agree with everything he said. Trifling embarrassment to the sports, but I want to see it. <laughs> and I will see it, but, but y'all let me know what y'all think about all this. Let me know what other videos you want to watch, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!